So says we are. Says we're going. Says we've got the red dot of the red dot of life instead of red dot of doom. Yeah. Record button should be green. Surely, like yeah, go. Yeah, green for go. Green for go. Re- yeah, go on. Red episode. is like negative. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's like stop. What are we on now? Huh? Episode thirteen. Episode thirteen. Oh God, that's probably why we've had dun, problems. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Look, so, unlucky number. So we have just put out the previous podcast, which was supposed to be out on Monday. That is now going to go live in current time in 20, 35 minutes. Yeah. So that'll be up. So by the time you listen to this one, the other one has gone up that you missed last Monday as a Saturday treat. Yeah, you get two for one. Two in kind three of. days. Yeah, look at us. Wham. I know. Even when we fail, we succeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no gremlins too large. Taking, yes. taking all the gremlins out. That, because we, we had an hour and 10 minutes of, of the podcast, which you'll listen to, and then we uh, basically the microphone switched off, the computer switched it to the laptop speakers mic thing, and then obviously the sound was buggered. So we just re-recorded what we did, answered the same questions, got it done. Boom. Yeah. I, I wonder if Joe head. Rogan has these problems. No, yeah, no. No, because he's got a Jamie. <laughs> yeah. We've got a gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our Jamie is a gremlin. He just yeah. fucks us up on purpose. You have to upgrade, you have to spend your time, pay your dues, and then eventually a gremlin turns into just someone who uh, does research for you yeah somebody who sends in relevant things to talk yeah. about and then eventually get a real person yeah it's yeah. like it's like when you get the youtube um things that for a hundred thousand you get a plaque for podcasts it's people yeah you get a human <laughs> just a human a bit youtube sends you a human yeah check my t-shirt i saw that it was class justice league yeah yeah that is cool I'm sick, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice like, and it's like a nice acid gray as well. You don't even really realise it's a geek comic T-shirt <laughs> yeah. until you look at it. Yeah, smart. Yeah. That is. Where's that from? I got sent it. You know, when we did the Justice League podcast. Yeah. Then somebody was like, "Oh, we've just created a load of uh, my mate Jonesy, who's an amazing artist." I was like, "Oh, my company's just created a load of stuff for them. Do you want me to send you some things?" I was like, uh, yeah. "Hell's yeah, hell's to the yeah." That's cool. Yeah, that's well cool. Fair play, like. What's his Jones name? Who is it? Which one is this? I can't see for past my beard. Um, he's Steppenwolf, isn't it? It's Steppenwolf, this one. Steppenwolf. Oh, yeah, it is. There yeah, with go. the horns. Yeah, I can see. My beard's so big now. Mm. I'm supposed to be filming the video to cut it, which yeah. is why I keep growing it, but it's getting stupid now. Like, if you, if I wear something black on top now, there is no neck. There's yeah. a hovering Det- eyes and nose, and then into you're like <laughs> You're like <laughs> the reverse of Batman. <laughs> yeah. In, like someone's yes. inverted the colours yeah. on Batman. I know. And with the blonde hair on top now, it's just like all top end. Yeah. I look like uh, just a, th- a thumb with yeah. blonde hair. It's <laughs> the goals, isn't it? If I tuck my lips in. Yeah. And just disappear. Maybe it's like the next form of evolutionary camo. Yeah. But I have to go and live somewhere very dark. Yeah. Or just wait till night time. You only come out at night. come out at night. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Which we won't be doing because we are fucking finally out of lockdown yeah. in T minus 40 40, 40 hours. Probably what, what, how much we've got left today. So let's say 52 hours. No, it's less no, than that. No, less than that. It's 36. It'll be... Th- Get in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's actually Monday morning we're out. Yeah, yeah, we're from first. So we've literally got a day. Like, from well, like the rest of Saturday today, then Sunday, then Monday morning. By the, time you're, by the time you listen to this, we are free. Yeah. We're free. No we one's going to listen to it because everyone's no doing every, stuff. We are currently out ourselves <laughs> frolicking naked in the streets. Yeah. We do that anyway, but... Touching everyone. Yeah. Just yeah. rubbing. Yeah. <laughs> Just rubbing everything everywhere. <laughs> Immediate arrests. Yeah. After lockdown. Brilliant. Blonde thumb gets arrested for licking and touching people. Yes, that went, that went weird quick. I can't wait though, mate. So it's, your gym's opening at six thirty. Yep, six thirty in the morning. How uh, full jackets gonna be at six thirty in the morning? Oh, it, like so after the first lockdown when we came back, it was the busiest morning we'd ever had. Like, and it was loads of people who never, ever, ever trained in the morning that just came in first thing. Um, really? Which was yeah, which was odd. Anybody and then literally the after like after the first day, then it started to go back to normal. Everyone was just like, "Oh my god, I'm getting in now." Yeah. Um, and I think as well, people did it thinking that they would miss like the rush if they were going to go before work or after work. Yeah. They're like, "It's going to be mad after work, so I'd rather just get in beforehand." But it was actually like really busy, yeah. <laughs> really busy on the morning, <laughs> which was bizarre. Um, but yeah, mate, it, like I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be steady because we're not doing day passes or anything like that to start with. Yeah. So that just means that it's going to be members only just for that first month. So I don't feel like we've got too much to worry about. But it's just going to be a busier first week. And it's the same as anything. If you like, remember when you're at school mm. and like you used to dread going back. And then after like the first day or two, like you'd never had yeah, any holiday yeah. and you just like settle back into the routine. Yeah, I think it's going to feel a bit like that. Yeah, you do. You get like right back into it real fast. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Got a videographer coming. Yeah. Ready. Film the first day back because I'm going to overload yeah. on pre work. Not pre workout, but pump. 
yeah. formula like citrulline malate, and we'll yeah. load up on that some sea salt, some pink Himalayan salt, yeah. and just hydrate like a bitch, yeah. and just go and get in as flight. jacked as humanly possible, yeah. and just see if I look like an absolute mutant. Yeah. Because you're going to get all those angles that you can't hit, they're all just going to swell and fill, and put, just everything's going to pop like crazy. Mm. Like, like It's going to be like newbie, newbie feels. Yeah. We're all going to be crippled by Wednesday. <laughs> yeah everyone's get, uh, we said that like everyone's gonna go super hard like monday then yeah. tuesday and then the doms will hit and then we're not gonna see <laughs> no, everyone we'll for the rest sleep. of the week yeah. and then it'll wait until next week and then it'll be busy yeah. again on monday so that's, well, i suppose we should say that what's the best idea for getting back in the gym if you haven't been going to the gym if if you've not been training at all and i'd say most people have done something haven't they? so i yeah. think like it's obviously going to scale depending on the amount how like if you've got good kit at home and you've still been training as normal kind of crack on fairly as normal too crazy yeah i would i'd scale everything back like to probably 50 percent of what you used to do yeah and then just play it by ear for the first few sessions because imagine you, getting hurt on your first session back. yeah exactly literally scale it back uh, volume wise weight wise everything you're, yeah you're gonna have to leave the gym before you want to yeah definitely definitely because you're gonna want to be in there and just smash smash yeah and you're gonna have to pull back yeah because it's you, if you're thinking about how much time you're going to accumulate in the gym or making progress you can come in there and, and like train hard for two hours be completely fucked for like three or four or five days after yeah. or you could just come in 45 minutes to an hour get something done then be able to come back again the next day yeah, and like do that literally every day fresh. of the week yeah, yeah so but definitely yeah i would say go back um if you haven't done it before go back into a high frequency program so if you're going and doing body part work do three body parts at a time yeah. um so you're doing less volume per body part but you're doing each body part twice a week and i think that's gonna be a really good way of if you haven't done that before is to jump back in with this idea yeah. so you basically do a compound movement and isolation movement those are the two exercises you pick for each body part you do three body parts and then when it's three days later you retrain them again and you do different compound in a different isolation. So you're still getting your two compound movements in a week and then your two isolations. So it's actually the same as the bro split of yes. two compound, two isolations on a single day. Yeah. So you're actually stimulating the muscle more, but also with obviously the retrospect of not training for freaking yeah, not properly, doing shed loads of volume in a single. It's going to protect your joints. It's going to uh, improve your um, range of motion through the workout because you're not going to get all jacked up and pumped out and yeah. be, you know lose all that that ability to move i think as well something to be aware of as well that you might not notice when you first start training but you'll quickly will and don't feel bad about it is it's not just going to be strength that's going to have gone down just your general fitness so you're mm. it's not only that t- kind of the weights that you're lifting you're probably gonna get a lot you're gonna get tired yeah. like a lot sooner than you'd think and your adrenaline might yeah. carry through, carry you through some of that, but then once that kind of starts Lactic to be threshold, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna have yeah. So like, just like increased. be like be prepared for it not to be this amazing session. No. It might be really good. You can make it amazing if you're sensible, like we said. Yeah, but um, also Pull just be back, like, be okay. There, work. Be okay if it fucking knocks you a bit sick, or if you like, yeah. you tire out quicker than you're expecting. That's cool. Like. If you you know, it's gonna just depend on what you're trying to do. Like. Within three weeks you'll be rocking and firing again. Yeah. You'll feel great. Yeah. And get your stretches in people. I'm gonna have to do this. It, remind me as well. Yeah. Bug me if you see me on Instagram not doing stretching. So or if you're doing stretches this morning, I want to be hassled. Yeah. Because I need it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We have to be we both have to be. Yeah. Like look what we just did. Okay. We were supposed to start recording this two hours ago. Why didn't we? Lou. Mr. Lou. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. What did you the, yeah, the pit. You, I didn't pull it up. Yeah, you I can't even remember what the fuck it was now. I don't know, but one one of the pictures and things you were showing me was a guy sucking a dog's face. Yeah, yeah, he had, he had the dog's lip in and, his mouth, and that and it said, distracted us for two hours. Yeah, sucking on a dog lip, like skydiving a dog face, a bloke getting a hair transplant. Well, we were sort in the skydiving thing as well, which that oh, we're yeah, going to talk about that. Over. You mentioned that. Should, you want, you so want... yeah, yeah, in the in the whole um, ethos that we're putting across at the moment of this whole worry, uh, you know, worry less, adventure more attitude do some stuff that you might have scared you recently but fuck it you're going to take living by living life by grabbing your balls and just getting out there and doing some stuff <laughs> grabbing your balls grabbing, oh, and don't grab life by the balls. balls yeah because again arrest yeah. everything we tend to suggest could get you arrested so yeah. just be careful yeah but grab this, life by the balls <laughs> i mentioned um to lou uh, it's got to be like five four or five weeks ago now about just in conversation we wanted to do a skydive you i think were like, we were talking yeah. about point break and then that's oh, how it led from it, it. yeah yes. we were talking about point if break and watch like, point break we can't be friends yeah um, the original not the remake yeah the remake shit don't bother with it uh god why did they yeah. even try i know and remake that what? there's no way you're remaking a swayze and keanu, and keanu, yeah, keanu make it any better it's like when they try to do total recall it's like what are you doing yeah what are you doing some Step stuff away. should just, just away. leave it as it is anyway distraction so um yeah i i said you know i've wanted to do a skydive 
for a while, but facilitating it was an issue. And then you're like, huh, I know a guy. Yeah, yeah. And not only do you know a guy, you know a freaking Red Devil. Yeah, yeah. He's a, yeah, he's in the Red Devils with the army. Um, and yeah, they just do some His absolutely... job is parachuting. Yeah, that's literally Black what he does maniac. day in, day out. And he's like, he's just got seven days of like solid jumps coming up. Yeah. So he's had, had time off because obviously similar things, you know, have affected, affected them. Because, you know, the Red Devils, they're, they're just an awesome kind of promotion tool for the army yeah. and they just they do some really awesome stuff and he can't they kind of put out loads of cool content they got an instagram page with like them just doing all these crazy jumps we, it's sick and uh we had the idea of if we're going to do this that we might try and recreate the dead president's jump yeah. or something yeah, yeah once we get good enough that's going to be the goal yeah yeah because um so obviously to start with you got to do it tandem which means you got to get strapped to someone i'm going to try and get strapped to the biggest yeah. most ridiculous bloke there so i look like an absolute baby yeah yeah, yes. we do try and find the biggest and the smallest guy, and we're like strap us to them. <laughs> yeah, you can have the really small guy who can't lift you all. I'll be an absolute behemoth. Yeah, that'd be just, hilarious. I was just yeah, it's like a little baby. Yeah, but we said we're going to take it step by step because he said like ideally we're going to try and be able to get trained up, like fully trained up on it, yeah. um, and get get the qualification done. But we'll first we got to do tandems, and then I think that I think there's those you know the indoor skydiving thing. Oh, the wind tunnel with the wind tunnel. Things, yeah. So I think that they can use those as well because you have to do. A certain amount of jumps or accumulate a certain amount of time because you have to be good at techniques you don't you that's yeah. part of the training yeah Learning so to do i think techniques. that they can use those tunnels to actually train you up as well Sick. so you obviously you wouldn't probably wouldn't be ideal to only do those tunnels no, and course. then jump yeah. your first yeah. time <laughs> like uh but yeah no, so i thought they did let you yeah so i think that the you know we're gonna do we're gonna do that and then we just said we'll we'll plan how we're going to do something moving forward but you want to make like a really sick a video feature of it yeah yeah because yeah. that's going to be cool that's i want to show like... how like you know, somebody with zero jumping experience can get involved and, and crack on and have some fun and do these make crazy things yeah. well they, they look crazy but actually they're probably like like positively life-altering experiences like the absolute yeah. freedom imagine that well you don't know but you will know once you learn to mm. ride a bike when you're on the bike and you're out it's free the only way of describing it is freedom like i'm literally in my helmet most of the time when i'm first out on that road going woohoo hoo, hoo, yeah in my just to nobody to myself in my helmet so and that's like genuinely like ups my life game mm. so imagine going from that to falling at terminal velocity mm-hmm. ten thousand feet i don't know how, how high do you go up shit i don't know lots of feet up in the yeah, air up. and then just jumping down to what place it looks just like a model world yeah because we were saying that that's part of why like we don't like the idea of bungee jumps hate it hate and, idea, um it. but like a plane is way better to jump out of and i was like it's almost because it's just so abstract when you look out of a plane it doesn't even look like anything like your no. brain can't really comprehend the height that you're no. at which would that's be kind I of free jump you must feel like you're flying because you can't i don't think it'll feel like falling yeah yeah because it's just because it wouldn't you there's not a perceivable just, change because yeah, yeah. it's so far away yeah not until you start getting closer when you can actually be like shit i'm getting <laughs> yeah but obviously you pull you you'd yeah, have the parachute probably, out yeah. at that point but yeah. um yeah i think that like you'd get an initial i imagine anyway this is that like, you get an, a, like an initial massive adrenaline rush as you feel that like, and then it that would subside and then it would be quite peaceful as you're yeah, like falling because yeah. because it wouldn't feel like you're Do going you know anywhere you'd feel flying went out on my bike the other week and we rode up over the moors and there's this point where you come back we went through wales and you loop back around but in wales they've got these um, mountain, almost like mountain, like peak. What? I suppose they do have. Do they have? Is it classed as a mountain in Wales? There are mountains like, in like Wales. Yeah. Snowdon, that is a yeah, mountain, yeah, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so it's almost like that kind of territory, very, very hilly, very high. Like you climb, 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 mm-hmm. and we got. There's one point where, if you look on Instagram, I took, I showed it, I created a cool little video for the stories for it. And it's where you pull up at the top and you look out over this entire reservoir and the whole valley's in front of you. And mm. the sun was shining, water, like the, the sunlight's bouncing off the water. And as we pull it, I literally sit there and I had a moment of just almost awe of nature. Mm. And this is another thing of being out on the bike. You have the whole, adre- like the freedom thing of being on the bike. And then you pull over somewhere beautiful and you're like, I've just done something awesome to arrive somewhere awesome yeah and you just get this overwhelming feeling of like fuck the world's cool yeah and i have really had that like looking out over this picturesque valley yeah you sent me that video as well didn't you yeah Yeah. it's so amazing and um i just can imagine that times 10 when you're looking down on the earth yeah as you're literally flying yeah i would i'd love to be at a point where i'd done it so much that it was just like peaceful doing it do you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. so like I said, you're going to get so much adrenaline. But I think if you, you're going to lose that, the fear factor, obviously, oh, if you do it a yeah. lot. And then you would just jump and it would just be like, just you just get that kind of calm, freedom-like yeah. feeling just falling. Plus you can buy cool helmets. 
Yes. And anything you can buy a cool helmet for, I'm all in. Yeah, if you need a helmet for it, then <laughs> yeah, it's got it's to it's it's be worth it. Sick. So that's that's a cool one. That's a plan for getting out of lockdown. That's like one of our first big major plans. So yeah. we'll bring that to fruition. For... Yeah. Have you got any ideas when you want to come down the gym? Well, this is what I was going to say to you. I've got a videographer coming, haven't I? Yeah, what day? Monday morning. Is of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Just the release of lockdown. Yeah. So I was thinking I might come over to yours yeah. and film there. Because the light's sick. Yeah. And I want to do the overload pump thing. So I could get maximum half natty lighting. Yeah. Plus all the citrulline my light in my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll be... And just good amb- ambulance access at yours. Yeah. Straight through doors and in. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right, we'll do that then. Yeah, I'll do that. Awesome. Oh, I'll just see how busy you are. Well, it won't really I'll... matter. It'll be even better, won't it, if it's busy? Well, yeah, like, don't get me wrong, probably like five, six o'clock in the afternoon is going to get... Pretty no, busy, I'll be I think. that. I'll be there midday. Midday, I think you'll be fine. Most yeah, people... I are... think that's why there's going to be a bit of a dip. Yeah. Most people back to work, aren't they? Yeah, yeah that's it. Like, yeah. normally, I think in all gyms, like, after, like, nine o'clock, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, it goes quieter again. You get, like, a little bit in the that morning. Early? You get a little... Yeah, because, yeah, like, a, a, you get the early trainers that are trying to get in before work, and most people try and, like, yeah. go to work at, like, you know, half eight, nine o'clock. So... We get a little rush in the morning, then it dips off. Then we get a little rush midday, and then it dips off. And Good then time. like four or five o'clock, that's when it's busy. Your gym hacks, people. Once yeah. You get in there. So, yeah. Sick. If you go on Google, if you Google any gym, because everyone's got fucking Google tracking where they go and what they do, it literally tells you peak Is times it? of everything. Yeah. So, I did not know that. Yeah, you go and have a look. I know more. Google knows more about my time, big, big the time of my yeah. gym than than I do. But yeah, and it'll tell you peak times and how it varies from day to day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, yeah cool. It's, it's interesting. So it's worth it's worth doing. Obviously, if you've got the flexibility and you also like a quiet gym, because some people like a not a heaving ram gym, but some people like, like it to be yeah bustling. So there's mm. you got a bit of just a bit of energy going on yeah, in there. I do like a um, then obviously yeah you could you could use. Use Google to help. Google Yeah, time you're training. Fucking Google. I know. As I suggested in my uh, recent video as well, I was one of my favourite videos. Do you know what else there is, people? Fucking Google. Fucking Some people Google. forget about Google completely. A lot Everyone of wants spoon feeding by some. It's like, it's, it's a spoon feeding culture, isn't it? Like, I want to know this, go to this person, yeah. rather than search it for yourself. Yeah. Which is fine, but also, like, I get some of the simplest questions you'd literally find in 10 seconds. Yeah, like, it's taking them longer to type the question, send it to me and wait for an answer. Yeah. And it will be to just search it. Yeah. But I did put in, um, I released that. Uh, uh, so you're still fat and it's your fault video, didn't I? They're yeah. Like, Ooh, it's got some good responses, Daddy. Yeah. Like very, very little negativity. Yeah. Um, at all. Like I, I haven't even seen any. Yeah. The, uh, so people are. I think I'm going to do a tough love series now yeah. because that kind of. It was obviously a very positive tough love thing, but it was also like you know, suck it up, motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, let's accept where we're at and take accountability and fucking change it. Yeah. And um, I think that's a really good message to push forward. But I did get, I did see one thing, and I, and I had to bite the bullet, bite my uh, lip on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it was like somebody, and it's not. Do you know what it is? Is that you can put anything out, and somebody will find a chink in the armor of what you're talking about. Yeah, of course. And it's like, well, you yeah, nothing, nothing is be all and end all. Yeah, like so you, you can find fault in any single thing. And this person was like, "What about?" Because my thing was like, listen, you choose what to put in your face. Yeah. You need to accept it. You need to not hide what you're eating. You need to accept what you're eating. Log it. See where you're really at. Let's start making you know fundamental changes. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you choose what you put in your face. Yeah. And then somebody put, what about this is only appealing to the demographics of those that can afford the food. What about children? They are just parents can only afford fast food, and that's what they're being fed. Fast food's like, expensive. Well, not even that. It's just the fact like. Douche! I'm not talking about eight year old people. Yeah. Forget, I'm talking about when you get to a point where you have control. Yeah. Like use your common sense, you nugget. Yeah. Why are you? And this, this, he didn't just put it as a sentence; it was a paragraph long, yeah. backing up his argument kind of yeah. thing. I'm like, it's not for eight year olds, you tit. Yeah. Like there's, that's it's like we remove common sense. So if somebody sees a point where they can at least have some kind of negative angle to come back at, they're like, yes, got one. And that you've missed. You, he missed the entire point of the video yeah some people just like that or some people like to just like that they're, they're just you know, argumentative no but it's not even that they will waste so much time arguing niche points yeah that they they miss the entire point yeah. and i bet they themselves are very unsuccessful yeah. in their own day-to-day dealings yeah. because it, that's their mentality yeah that's it it's just going to focus on the negatives well it's basically which, finding an excuse yeah finding uh, find in in, an, in a world of 98 percent success so they'll find a two percent that could send you wrong and, yeah. f- and focus on and that yeah yeah that's and literally that's, that's yeah. Their, his mindset yeah and that's just a, like you baffling human yeah could, that's it but the thing is if, if you can flip that even if your chances are slim if you focus on it like just in in the fact of where you 
your mind that, yeah. that like automatically is going to up your chance of success, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're... Do you know the funny thing was? He didn't look like he was overweight. Yeah. And he's, I didn't really... I had to pull myself away because I was going to respond. I thought, no, yeah. that's an argument you can't win. Because yeah. I was literally going to say what I said. Listen, you tit. It's clearly not... Yeah. It's not a foolproof. I'm just... Yeah. It's, it's, this is for people to just... Who are in that area of the way this is going to help them. This is, And that's all I got. And then there's actual people who've struggled with lifelong weight issues you've messaged me like dude this was awesome yeah i really i didn't know some of the stuff you told me and now yeah i'm fucking owning up to this shit it's time for a change like a lot of the time it's not even worth having the argument there's a great quote i can't remember who it was by it's like if you waste time arguing with an idiot you then have two idiots (laughs) yeah that is very true yeah there's another one i was like as well um Arguing with an idiot is like arguing with a pigeon. They're still going to shit over everything and walk off cock him in the head. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you just yeah. think, yeah, that is really true. You can't, you can't when when they're so. If someone's so opinionated that they won't even listen or see past their own opinion, then you you don't don't bother. Well, don't waste your breath. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So but that was it. Was literally very few of those. But I just remember looking at that one and going like, how did you? Why? You know. Anyway, but I yeah, think that's no. it as well. Though it's like I think we we did talk about it before. It's really hard to not almost dial in on that that little bit of negativity even though there's overwhelming positivity yeah like i have like a social media account for the business and we obviously don't get anywhere near kind of the comments and whatnot but occasionally if you get like one bit of negativity it's so hard to like almost pulls your double yeah to, yeah to double guess and you're like oh really and but when, when you see everyone else is agree and everyone else is like kind of on your side and knows intentions that's are always because good. you know what you're when you know what you're putting out is real and not um a charlatan move and you're mm. not just trying to make money could you believe in what you're putting out and it's truthful yeah you're all you know when people agree you're like well yeah because it's cool isn't it yeah, yeah it does work good to see i knew it did yeah and so then when someone goes chink no yeah. you're like well, fuck you, you yeah. know, no I'm not lying here this is true you know and yeah. that's why you focus on it so I think maybe but they do say you need 10 positives to one negative yeah. in terms of getting the same energy feedback kind of thing hmm. it's, it's really bad that um, so I physically but the reason I did I was like nope not biting on that and I'm going to go and respond to all of the people who have actual weight issues and are commenting on this and being like this is cool I'm going to go and I went, put my energy into messing back to them going yeah. go get it those are the people that get it. Us, yeah. go and get it yeah. start now go and it's sick. So, yeah, I really like that. That was a good one. That's, um, that's what I wanted from it. Yeah. It was a good video. Good I haven't one. actually watched it yet. Cheers, mate. That's all right. I'll, 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 give, I'll listen to it on the, the, the drive Overwhelming support that you show me on That's it. right. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking lie to your face. Am I? Uh, no, I haven't watched it yet. I, I, other than today, I haven't watched it, my sheet. I've yeah. had a manic week this week. Yeah. It's been really, really busy. Yeah, today is my first, like, quite day. I'm, I'll, I'll <laughs> listen to it in a bit. I'm kidding. Uh, I was going to say something else at the same time. No, I've gone. Um, so yeah, that's cool. So we've had some really good stuff. Should we pour? We're well, going to pour. Well, let's go through. We are back. We are back with a single malt this week. Yeah, we've so had Wolfburn before, but this is a now. Yes. this is a different. No, Wolfburn. but there's a story to this one. Oh. So this is uh, the Wolfburn, which we have had before. And we did like it. And it was a lightly. No, it wasn't. What was the one we got before? It was a single malt, uh, but it was sherry? a sherry oak yeah, cask. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Whereas this one is a more of a standard whiskey, and this is a lightly peated whiskey which i found out but this was gifted to me by the boys from late night legacy so if you watch on youtube you'll see that the box has stuck to it a pair of devil horns which were stuck to my head yes uh prior because i went and um i did a music video for the band uh, have so, you have you got photos of that because i don't yeah, I haven't I haven't seen you post anything they, i was waiting they've created a trailer of the yeah. video so i'm going to put that up as a slide across from the pictures ah, yes, so, nice. uh, yeah so i'm waiting uh, actually they got that through uh, yesterday so I'm going to have that up on Monday by the time you're watching Screwcast there should be a post of me coming up showing me as the alter ego of the lead singer of um, Late Night Legacy and it, they, I turn he turns into me who is this like demon and devil exactly. I got to smash a guitar smash whiskey bottles and just go generally ballistic in a video the sick. little clips that I saw it was just I, I just kept thinking of Tribute by Tenacious D <laughs> yes I was just yeah. like that's what I, I was just like I was just like imagining that that literally went on my playlist on the way home yeah <laughs> I love singing along that song yeah I, like, I do um, so yeah the boys as uh, obviously now listen the, these guys are up, up and coming band they're, 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 their music is sick like and if you listen to my playlist on Spotify Wake Up With Lex I think it's what is it called Wake Up With why is my Spotify playlist? Well, don't ask me. I've changed it a couple of times to make it easier to people to find. I don't remember my own playlist. I think it's called Wake Yourself Up or Wake Up Just uh, Lex. So it says Wake Up Lex and it pops up and it's a whole feel good playlist and in there is Late Night Legacy and um, they had to change the name of their song. So it's it's now, 
it was called Plastic Hearts, but then Miley Cyrus released an album called Plastic Hearts. Oh, so they had to change it. I think it's called Dreaming of You now. Or, uh, I'll find out, but you'll find out on Monday the, all the details of the song. Um, so I got to do a little bit of miming, a little bit of piano playing, smashed up a guitar, like properly got to mm. smash. Harder to break than you expect. Yeah. Yeah. First one cracked it, second one smashed it. Yeah. But I put full force into the first one. And yeah. It just kind of went... <laughs> so then tripled up on the yeah. second and took it to pieces smashed two whiskey bottles to get a nice slow-mo angry smash of the whiskey running out yeah. I was sat in like this wing back chair as a demon yeah. no just a jacket a sick jacket on. I remember of it was, yeah, you it put was, on your story right yeah yeah it was cool really cool the glass went dude we were in this huge converted um, I think it was like a mill house mm. so beautiful big beams everywhere brick walls and then one area was completely painted whited out so you could film in it and it was just all white yeah. It was really cool. But we smashed the bottle in the middle of it. And let's say it's a 50 to 60 foot long room. Probably about that. We found it in the corners of the entire room. Like I gave okay. it a good old wallop. Yeah. Hit one of the lads in the face with a bit of a glass. <laughs> Shit. And he was still like 20 feet back. Damn. Yeah. So it, yeah. Be careful. Nice. Yeah. Luckily, it's like thick ass whiskey glass bottle. So, yeah. you know, it didn't really go sharp. Yeah. But it was cool. I it, was, it was nice to smash stuff. Yeah. I really want to. Have you seen those like rage rooms? Where you just like go yes. in and just fucking destroy oh, stuff. We should do that. Yeah, that'd be another one. Yeah, but do you know what's bad? What? Uh, they don't reset them. Oh, really? So it's first person in gets the fresh room, I'm pretty sure. Because oh. imagine they're not going to reset a full room, are they, for every single person? Then you just get to go in, they get like a time limit. And then yeah. you're like, oh. uh, I, 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 mm. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll look, look into, into that. That'd be yeah. cool, though. Rage room. Cool. Right, let's um, we have a pour? look. So, Let yes, cool. we've got our ice balls going. So this is the Wolfburn whiskey. And uh, this one is same little bottle as the last time. Nice, real nice gift bottle. Uh, lightly peated, um, non chill filtered natural color. So this is going to be dark because it's not if it's peated. peated. And it says on it, uh, Morven. I don't know what that means. Is that the area where it's from? It's from Scotland anyway, which means that. Oh, yeah, because I found out someone said to me, if you want to know if it's Scottish or not, the way they spell whiskey is different. Yeah. They, oh, the Scots spell whiskey without an E. So they spell it W H I S K Y. So that's how you know if you've got a Scottish I'm or an Irish I'm dyslexic, so I won't whiskey. even notice. There we go. <laughs> dyslexic! Yeah. The perfect person to buy a gift for. I could buy you... You could just put I could buy you a pair of Nuke trainers or some Abidas. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm going to buy you some shit fake gear. <laughs> yeah, I wonder... You just walk around thinking you're absolute boss wearing gutty. Yeah, yeah. I thought, it, it helped when I used to shop at Shoe Zone and I used to get Timberlakes instead of Timberlands. <laughs> As a as a school kid, <laughs> happy as anything. Yeah, just like oh yeah, <laughs> oh that's so good. <laughs> oh Christ, that made my eyes warm. I laughed so hard. Ooh, oh that is dark. That is dark. Or is that the Jesus? Bottle? Is that the bottle? Though? I, oh, I think the bottle's that, dark. Oh, the bottle. bottle is dark. Yeah, maybe that's to protect it from like sunlight. I don't know. It's green glass, that isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's a nice looking bottle, though. That's a good gift bottle, isn't it? Yeah. Very very. It I looks mean, expensive. hard to describe. It's got a black foil pull on the top and so where normally it's wrapped in like silver that's all blacked out so that looks cool against a dark bottle I did really they like get that. wolf burn for any particular reason or oh because they saw that we liked it on uh, one of the other podcast when oh, we tried it so it's like we didn't know what to do so we'll get you one that you said you liked and it was one of our favorites actually yeah, yeah. as far as like man whiskeys go yeah yeah it's no, proper, wolf, not wolf, a lot wolf, of sweetness wolf. to it mm. Mm, right we're gonna uh, reset the camera and pour this we good? Yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, I looked into hacking the camera. The Shall US. I open up? It's an EOS R that we film on. Yeah, you open. And um, they, there's a thing called uh, Magic Lantern, which you use to like crack the basically the back end of the camera, so you can like open up its actual capabilities. Because they massively like uh, what's the word when you s- throttle it? Throttle, yeah, yeah, no, what's it called? Yeah. Uh, not bottleneck it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, whatever they do to an engine, you know, they they. Uh, underpower them yeah i know what you mean so the, yeah they limit its potential yeah obviously i don't know why because uh, it's just software but with magic lanterns you can often improve like being, you know, the rates at which you can film at like 1080p and 4k and stuff oh, really? and you can it you probably because it makes it less stable so or like maybe. more prone to like yeah i don't know but you can even change like you know when it crops on 4k and stuff you can mess around with all that but they have yet to figure out how to completely break the eosr in so we're still waiting that's a really that's nice, a nice bottle. looking bottle. Even when you take the black foil off the top, it stays all black. Yeah. That's a really nice bottle. It looks expensive, doesn't it? It does. That? It looks really expensive. I can't remember. Did you get Wolfburn? Did you buy it or did I buy it? I can't remember. No, it was gifted again. That oh, was the first yeah, one. Yeah, that's what it is. 
Oh, what we were saying I think it's as well. Somewhere between 32 to 38, maybe in the 35 to 40 pound range. Probably, what we were going to say, we talked about this just before because you were on about getting a PO box. It's like, because we, well, oh, we right. get questions yeah, yeah. about like, where can I send stuff over? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, like whiskey wise or whatever else. Yeah. Just use the gym's address. So black, if you Google Black Country Barbell, if you just send it, our address is on, on Google. Yeah. And send then just any, any whiskeys or. Just send it um, for the attention of. Yeah, crew Crewcast. Cast. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that'd be good. Yeah, that, that'd be that's sweet. a perfect place to send it because, especially not when we weren't open. Obviously, I had something get delivered to. Well, it, they attempted delivery on the gym twice, and yeah. I have no idea what it was. And that, the only thing I could think of is someone had done that through the crewcast, and I and it returned to sender because mm. obviously when we're in the gym working in the office, but the shutters are closed, so it appears that so they don't bother. Trying. Yeah, they don't even bother. Yeah. So they just posted like failed failed delivery twice, returned to sender. And then never got sent back, but we have no way of finding out what it ever was or who and sent it. And they won't tell anything. you, know, if you ring them and ask. That's yeah. really annoying because I get sent some stuff sometimes and they'll be like, there's a charge on this. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what is it? I can't tell you. Where's it from? I can't tell you. Can you at least tell me if it's coming from a different country or where, why is there a charge? And they'll literally not tell you anything. I'm like, well, then what? why am I going to pay you for something I don't know what it is, you idiot? Yeah, yeah, it's strange. So, yeah, yeah that's, so. A, that's the only thing I could think of is it someone's Do you know what, done it for the crew cast. It's a single malt, that. Yeah. Apparently, we're not meant to drink that with ice. Oh, really? Yeah, because I went across to my lovely new neighbours across the way oh, the other day yeah, yeah. and I had some of that Duro. Yeah, Dura. Actually, Dura. 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 Yeah, yeah, actually quite nice. Very peaty though, yeah. super smoky. But um, I asked him, I said, do I drink this ice or not? He was like, single malt? No, you'll ruin it. All right, okay. So, uh, well, we're having this one with us. <laughs> well, you're going you're to be driving a little bit. Yeah, I'm you? literally only going to have a little sip. Ooh, that's a good pop. Yeah, that's that's a... not cheeky either. No, that's no, no, a that's a very pop. different. Yeah. Right, poor, poor sound. Is it a glugger or is it just a... Oh, it's a proper glugger. Oh, that's white. Yeah, it's light, much lighter. Oh, wow. So the bottle is just dark. There you go. Oh, that is really light. Yeah. That's almost golden. Yeah. That's super light. Mm, do you mind? Glug, glug test. Oh, that's a nice noise. Hello, sir. I don't know. I think I've had a whiskey this week, mate. Oh, that's very peachy. Oh, wow. That that's is almost oh, like... Oh, my God. I don't, right, okay. That s- smells almost a bit like abstract in... I don't, I don't. I can't explain that. Wolf Ben Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It's from uh, the Scottish Highlands, I guess. Um, just says lightly peated Morven. And then, oh, it's stamped there on the bottom of the bottle, Wolf Wolfburn Distillery. I like that. That's yeah, cool. That is, very that is cool. a bottle you could definitely keep and turn into like a little light or something. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, bang. Sorry if you got a bash and I hit the microphone. Um, I'm keeping all cool bottles. And what I'm going to do is get a glass drill and turn them all into lamps. And lights for around the house. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. Candle holders or something as well. Yeah, I think we can drink this off the bat, you know, because we don't need to let the ice melt if it's a single malt. Let's go for it. Yeah, let's have a chin chin chin, mate. Welcome to freedom. Yeah. Here's to freedom, people. To freedom. Oh my God, that's smooth as anything. That is nice. Oh, wow. Mm. Not a lot of heat from that one. No, nothing. Um, No real spice off the... Off the first, it it's, is peaty. It's That's just, kind it's of just nice quite though. smoky taste. Yeah, it, yeah, I like that actually. I like that. That's very smooth. Not very little burn. Don't need to let it sit in the mouth too long before swallowing it. That's what it's, she it, said. That tastes <laughs> that tastes very different to the others that we've had. Like, it does, very, yeah. very different. But in a not, it, it's it's That's yeah, nice. it's very different. Nice. I like it. It's um a very. It's so even to smell it. Mm-hmm. That's so different because we normally so there's zero sweetness in this one. Yeah, like zero. It's all about. The oaky... I've got almost like a slightly citrusy kind of aftertaste. Yeah, I, maybe. I yeah, it's quite clean, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it tastes... It, it doesn't feel heavy. It yeah. tastes smoky. Kind of medicinal in a way, but not in a bad way. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like... Um, there's, there's zero burn on that at all. And it's a really soft, smoky, peaty flavour awesome. over the top. That is really nice. I could say you could have that with a steak. Mm. Wolfburn's really very nice. good in general. Oh, wow, from the two that we've good. had, I yeah, wonder if they do any more. Maybe we should look at them more. That. They are very good. Mm. Right, oh. So if you if you like your kind of peaty, smoky flavors, there's very little fruity flavor to that. But it almost does have that clean citrus aftertaste to it. Mm. It doesn't leave your mouth feeling hot or fire or anything. There's very little heat even down going down Com- the throat. Yeah. Compar- what she's uh, comparing this to like the rum that we had, the 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 gunpowder, the gunpowder rum. one, yeah. Woo! Blew our fucking blew our head off at the that start. That literally, yeah, went out down my, out up into my brain and out my nose. Yeah, I wondered. yeah, it was still nice. Oh yeah, that was nice as well. But... Do you know what drinking these whiskies has been doing as well? I swear to God, it has started to make my palate for food more distinguishable. Yeah, like you. And this is a really really bad. People are going to be like, oh 
dear no because i'm going to say that the reason i figured this out is because you brought in some jalapeno and cheddar like what are they they were walkers the, you know the like the ridged wedge ridged oh, wedges. walkers max i think they're called man crisps yeah and I was like, I'm not a big crisp person, but you you was look you were eating these crisps last night, and sw- so I looked over and you was literally sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, what the fuck? What is that? And I was like, jalapeno. So I was like, let me try one. I didn't realize quite like what it was to be. Yeah. And I put just a little one on my tongue, and it was as if I'd put jalapeno pepper in my mouth. <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. I was like, that's so ridiculous. It's impressive. Yeah. And then um, I ate a few more, and my I was able to separate on my tongue where I was feeling the where I was tasting the cheese to the jalapeno to the spice and everything. I was like, literally could section my tongue out. And yeah. I think I swear to God, that's from doing this with the whiskeys. Yeah, I think as well, just being very mind, mindful of the process when you when you're actually attempting to taste something, yeah, like because um, if you're just Better doing mechanism. something, yeah, if you're just doing something without thinking, but yeah, that's, I guess it's just a skill. But it was because it was such a strong, strong flavor. Now we're getting freedom as well. We need to look into this like. Uh, like a whiskey going to a distillery 100% or go, yeah. 100% we'll do that Definitely. maybe uh, mandate next week or the week after we can we can like spend a couple hours doing a bit of research into into some and there's some and good places around here apparently up. someone yeah. was telling me the other week um, they mentioned it to me and it's not far there's a really good one that does it yeah I'll find out where it is yeah no we'll have a look at that yeah um, one one thing w- this is going to be like a big topic for, for today's podcast I yeah. know we're already like half an hour in <laughs> yeah. but it was something that we got asked last week and it was such a good question that we were just like we can't leave this all in like we can't we, just we can't answer it. it in one no no and it was I mean it's for, it's, a, it's a big question and I think it's a good one especially since we've come through lockdown and a lot of people have been on their own and whatnot um, and they've realised a lot of people realise I think through this time how kind of lacking in friends they might be yeah. or have found that real friends weren't friends they thought they were because you know it has shown a lot of people's true colours this mm. kind of lockdown yeah. thing hasn't it so the question was what it was um, so the, the specific question um, but we'll probably cover a slightly more broad we're going to get broader with it yeah yeah was basically um, best or tips on making friends when you're in your thirties with a busy family life and work life. Now, I'm it. removing immediately the thirties part. Yeah. That was just him as a personal message because yeah. he's in oh in his thirties. But I the, think he probably it, this is any age. Yeah, I think you, uh, like you when you when you're in your thirties, you might be just settled into a routine so you probably don't yeah, go that's... like you know when you're at school you just meet loads of random people you do loads of random different shit yeah when you're in college you still do it and when you're in uni you do it and i, th- I guess like when you're 30s it's just like that's in most people's minds they're all settled they get a bit ingrained in what yeah, they're doing, they, yeah they just go to their job really they go home habit. really bad yeah. habit really yeah bad like habit. so yeah this is going to be we're going to generalize it though for just generally like how to get yourself out there uh and and meet new people and do things so yeah. let's crack on Instantly, have a bit of a sip. Fair play. Yeah. Mo- Who did this? So thank you, boys. Late Night Legacy. Yeah, thanks. Late New night. video coming out late night next week. But as you listen to this, it should be. They should have announced it. So check them out on Instagram, Late Night Legacy, and um, enjoy the little trailers there of mm. the Demon Lex. Yeah, Demon Lex. <laughs> yeah, I think first first tip I would say to anyone is, there's a good chance you may already, but join a gym. If And if you're already a member of a gym, it's probably a little bit harder at a commercial gym most of the time. Join like a like an independent smaller gym or a gym that's very community orientated. Yeah, so the, we spoke about this before. The difference to cut you off yeah. really nice and rudely there. No, so no, no, right. uh, I trained at Exercise for Less. Yes, in Shrewsbury, and then compared that to going to Black Country Barber where you are, yeah. and it's you may as well not class them as the same business whatsoever no. you can be absolutely anonymous in exercise for less whereas in bcb because it's a it is a limited number of people that um you, you can be on the membership yeah. roster essentially yeah. that you're getting um you're more specialized in your equipment so you're getting people in there who are of real purpose and real mm-hmm. drive but they're also in their happy place yeah and that's a big thing so being in a good mood and getting and getting in and doing something you love is automatically going to make you more amiable to other people around you. Like because a pub is not a great place to meet people. No. It's loud. People are under the influence of of alcohol. Yeah. Uh, they're usually talking a load of bollocks. There's not much. I think being in the gym when you're training kind of grounds you mm. and kind of makes yeah. you almost a little humble because you're in there pushing against yourself. Kind yes. of. Yeah, I think as well. Like people see like going to the pub. It loosens them up because they have some alcohol, and that so, maybe makes the conversation flow a little bit easier. But the conversation's probably gonna 
be a pain in it. Yeah. Whereas you also can get a very similar effect from training because you you know endorphins get released. You feel a little bit happy, feel a bit more confident, feel a bit yeah. more energized. Um, so you can kind of use that that endorphin high to to yeah, 100%. to like you know if you're a bit uncomfortable meeting new people or talking to new people and like don't go wrong don't just go and bother people in the middle <laughs> yeah, of the sets yeah. yeah here's a massive thing right <laughs> do not mid set walk up to somebody and one hover because you think well i'm not talking to him it's okay no being in that and their peripherals like mm. in a purposeful way yeah is really off-putting yes yeah. uh wait until they're literally within a full resting state and clearly just chilling mm-hmm. um and then go and speak but it's also like i know when people come up and ask me questions I'm happy to answer them, yeah. but fucking listen to my answer. Yeah. The amount of people who've come up to me and started talking, as I'm answering the question they're answering, they're not even listening to my response. They're, they're waiting for me to finish to be, so they can get the next question out. Yeah. And they're not actually listening. Yeah. One kid, and I don't know if it's just nerves, and it might well be, but I came up and asked a question to me, and it was quite an in-depth thing. So I was like, oh, you know, there's this and that. As I was talking to him, he started looking around the gym. Yeah. Now, that might be a nervous thing, Yeah. but... He, if you're going to go ask them a question, man, get yourself in the zone to be able to face to face with somebody mm-hmm. and just talk. Because if they are willing to engage back with you, you've won the battle. Yes. There's nothing more to feel awkward about. Yep. That's because it. they're already going to engage with you. Mission done. Relax, <laughs> yeah. chill out, and enjoy the feed or yeah. whatever it is you've created. I did. I think I spoke about this briefly when somebody asked about like getting confident and talking to girls. Oh, we said we were going to do that as a video as well, oh, didn't we? Yeah, but yeah. Um, I said something that like I did when I when done. I was young. Um, and then, like, if you were going shopping, just, like, go and talk to... So, like, it doesn't have to be in a... Like, you find this person attractive, mm. especially if you're... If it is specifically, like, if you're a guy and it's uncomfortable to, talking to women, just get comfortable talking to women in a general setting, yeah. not trying yeah, to yeah. chat them up. So, like, you know, go and ask them a question about some clothes and try to try to start what is, like, a conversation about, you know, getting an item of clothing and actually just have you know, a bit of back and forth. Yeah. Just get comfortable in your ability to, to just chat to a stranger. I've got a funny story for that. Yeah? Go yeah. On. So my mate, I'm, I'm putting you on blast here, my mate Mark, right? <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a very strong-minded person. Mm-hmm. So it takes a lot to change his mind about something, yeah. which I often take the challenge on. Yeah. And it usually involves clothes and shoes and yeah. stuff like that. Because uh, he, it's, it's a funny one because he's, he wants to to be in tune with fashion and stuff, but not overly fashionable. Yeah. But then he's also because he's his work is suit and shoes. Mm-hmm. He's doesn't feel kind of confidence in trying something outside of the cut and cl- clean and cut look yeah. because that's what he's instilled with at work: it's suit, tie, shoes. You know. Yeah. So when I go out and I'll say, "Listen, this will definitely look good." Um, he's like, he knows I'm a bit out there with yeah. what I would wear, so he's always a bit like. Really, is it, is it, or do you just think it's going to look cool? So yeah. we were in a, a store once. I was looking for this specific pair of Doc Martens, which were in a sale, and they were, a, they were ones I was wearing. People were like, what are those? And they look a bit like Red Wings. So they're like a, a moccasin boot. Yes, they're sick. They're super comfortable. And I was trying to get them, and they didn't have them in my size in the store. But I said, what size do you have them in? Do you have them in a, a size like... He's a man, so size 12. Yeah. He's a proper Yorkshire lad. And they were like, well, I think they have an 11. Or, I think he's an 11. I think they had them in 11. I went, you just get me an 11 for it. I was going to try them. I was like, Mark, try these on. You've got to try these on. They're dope. Yeah. And he was wearing like blue jeans and a t-shirt at the time. Um, so quite nice standard outfit. And they're like a, a deep cherry brown, these things. Mm. So he brought them out and they put them on. And I was like, motherfucker, they look better on you than they do on me. Mm. Like, and genuinely meant it. I was like, dude, they look sick. You have to, do you understand you have to buy these now? Yeah. They're six, I think they're like 65 or 70 quid down from like 120 something. Yeah. I was like, then when they're gone, they're gone. Like Doc Martens don't make the same things again. You've got to get them when they're here. And he's like, mm, they're all right. But he he's like got a certain style that he wasn't used to wearing yeah, it, it was so, outside of so his... it's outside his normal thing so in tune of you just talk, saying just talking to girls just mm-hmm. to get used to doing it i literally turned around in this store and went ladies and there was two girls there now immediately right i'm engaging with the girls yeah. i'm using mark to facilitate my ability to bring some bring yeah. in women and talk to them about something that and i'm and i always do things on a really not comical, but it's, it's always a bit of a heightened state and a yeah. bit of a bit of a bit of a giggle. And so I called them out literally. So I, my mum's a very welcoming 
way of doing it, I feel. Yeah. So I was like, literally, I was like, ladies, we come over, and, ladies, I need your help. We just help me with this, which ultimately makes them think, ah, oh, you know, yeah. it's, it's a supportive thing. It's not, he's not trying anything weird, not going, oh, you do, you work, yeah, too, yeah, work yeah. too long, not sleazing. And then I come over and he goes, will you please tell this gentleman that he looks great in these boots? Yeah. And they literally like had a bit of a giggle yeah. at that as well. Looked at him and now Mark's a good looking lad as yeah. well. So I looked at him and went, oh, I love those. They look yeah. really good. Yeah. And his face immediately went from doubting me to, really? Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, and I was like, w- do you think he looks great? And the first girl was like, yeah, no, I really like them. Second girl, like, honestly, come on. Honest opinion, not, doesn't look good. She was like, honestly, really, really, honestly, really good on you. Yeah. And so now you've created a link already. Now I could have yeah. taken that and kept chatting yeah, of and walked it through and gone and got numbers or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's where you can go from there. Obviously at the time I was not single, so I didn't. Yeah. But, you know, it's that would have been a point where, for Mark if he was not confident talking to women, could have jumped in and had a chat. Yeah. He is, so that's irrelevant. Yeah. But so many people are uncom- uncomfortable making that first contact, whereas like I think when you go in with a, a completely innocent agenda, yes, just that's like the best way. Some people, especially like, you know, I'd say this is probably more appropriate for like teenage guys. Um because the the only goal <laughs> a lot of the time is like trying to pull. It and it puts too much so pressure. much pressure, yeah. yeah and then pressure. people just crumble under the pressure. And it's just like, if you just go in, just be a normal person, because women are normal as well. Yeah. Then, then nothing's it, scary. Here's, here's the thing as well. If you get this in your head from the early get-go, not every girl's going to like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you might be like crushed by that factor. Get prepared to have boulders dropped on you. Because it's a very very specific world that people live in and the people have tastes and those tastes matter and it's not your control yeah. you will when you walk up they will immediately judge whether you're their type or not mm-hmm. and if you're not then that is just the way it is and that's absolutely fine yeah it's a numbers it's game not a reflection on you well, and it most, might be, but... well it might be yeah if you're not a not an idiot but um if if you're just you know you're being now you're not being too sleazy you're not being anything like that you're not being too try hardy mm. just try and have a general chat with people if you can get somebody laughing at any point, yeah. you are usually 110% better than most people. Yeah. I think as well, we've kind of we deviated a little bit off the original point, but I think that as a, if you, if you're, I think most people will be less confident talking to a member of the op- opposite sex because automatically, assuming you're, you're attracted to the, the opposite sex, mm. there's, there's going to be like a little bit more pressure because that's not the people you, you interact with most yeah. a lot of the time. Nice 2021 uh, add in there, mate. Well, so it's true. Like, I would say, uh, like, I would imagine it would probably be. You know, if if you were um, you know uh, gay or lesbian, um, it would probably be the roles reversed potentially. Mm. I don't know, don't know. whether well, appro- we will never know. as a gay man approaching a, another man would that be harder than just chatting randomly to a woman? I, I, I don't know. I reckon bloke to bloke's got to be easier. But it, uh, like, as a as a if you were a gay guy approaching a man who may be straight or gay, all oh, right, because that must be challenging as well. Like. Do you know what I mean? Like, like with, with as a straight person. But again, on, then this leads us on to a good point, actually. Environment is a factor. Yeah. So don't, you know, go somewhere where you're going to be comfortable in the environment. Well, not comfortable, but in an, an environment that you like as well. So don't, like, go and try and pick people up in a, a library. Yeah. If you're not naturally somebody who goes to libraries. I also you know, think don't just... Don't go out to try to pick somebody up. Like I think that's yeah. probably a little. We deviated bit too... again, haven't we? We're yeah. going right, to we'll save the pickup things for the next. Yeah, that's episode. a different video. Um, but we're getting back to my point with the Mark thing was, I was able to use a situation to pull in other people mm. and talk to them. Now, if you st- if you get that going and there's a little bit of like something happens straight away and it's easy to talk to, yeah. you can lead off and then and go like cheers, and then you can start say that wasn't a shop. Say that's the gym, like we said. Yeah. You've had a chat about somebody about an exercise. You've pulled in some other people. Is this cool? Yeah. Then next time you go in, hey, how are you doing? You know, it's again yeah. you've got that um, the the fact that you've already broken that that barrier. Yeah, down. it's breaking the it'll and break that's the it. Isn't yeah, it? and that simple contact day to day, and don't try and rush it either. It's like a lot of people I know will, if, especially if they've been a bit lonely for a while, they'll they'll feel like they get on with someone really well, and then they'll kind of go too overboard yeah. and be like, oh, we should go and do this, we should go and do that, and it's like just you know, yeah. Ease in, yeah. ease in with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't don't scare people off. Yeah, don't be like too old in because I know uh, it's easy to be like that, and it can be it's a very genuine thing to be, yeah. but um, it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if that other person is like you and has a busy life mm-hmm. and things going on. Um, so just you know, after after time when you really feel uh, you know you've made a connection with people, then do that thing of like you know what we should chill outside if you want. fancy getting a, a drink or a bite to eat, and just let me know. Just yeah. if you fail a free moment, they'll be like, yeah, sure, I'll give you a WhatsApp. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, it's easy. Yeah, a bit more casual. Just but- keep it that way. But I think our important point is 
get get yourself out of your normal routine. Yeah, go to environments that you want to be. First, that you want to be in. So don't force yourself. Like I said, if you don't ever go to libraries, don't just like I'm going to go to or a jiu-jitsu. library. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, don't, just like so, yeah. go somewhere that you have an interest in, because actually, as long as you have a genuine interest, being a newbie actually is a good thing. So you know, That's me true. relatively new starting BJJ, I've started chatting to loads of new people and I can use my ignorance as a real easy in yeah. to, to start conversations. Yeah. I've chatted with loads of people there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, it'll just because I can't remember how to tie my belt <laughs> properly. And I'm just like, can you show me? I know you yeah. showed me last week, but I've literally I've forgotten yeah. again. Or, again, with levity. Yeah. You yeah, know, like make a, lot, happy you know, back yeah, like, a little bit of a joke. I've got the brain of a dead pigeon, mate. Can you show me how to, you know, little yeah. things? And like yeah. most of the time, they'll it'll be a joke again. Of like, I've been here a year. I've literally just figured this yeah, out. Yeah, and they do. It's like, the- and if you can give somebody something where they can help you as well, in a yes. way where they are e- uh, imparting wisdom to you, yeah. that's a nice feeling for them. Mm-hmm. They feel like they, you know a bit positive. Yeah, help that guy do that. You know, y- yeah, it's a I'll, nice thing. It's be, yeah, being a beginner in a new situation, as long as there's genuine interest there. Yeah, like I want to know how to do these things in BJJ. I want to learn. Um, so yeah, it's just a super easy way to start conversations and like you know going in humbly, not like having a, an ego that yeah because you're not great because that's fine and most people are okay that yeah. everyone's not amazing yeah and again like i think maybe the bjj thing and the gym thing they're very closely related because they're both fitness yeah, orientated so think, but it could be a lot of other things well it? i wanted to say like it doesn't have to be the gym it could be any kind of uh it could be a drama society it could be just anything that you're interested in mm-hmm. archery uh, shooting i don't know whatever it is but go join a club Go do something that feeds that interest that also puts you around other people. Yeah. The ve- the bare basics of it are, if you're not putting yourself around other people, don't expect the world to suddenly drop somebody on your doorstep that's going to yeah. be your, your friend for life. You know, It doesn't work like that. But you will find friends in the weirdest of places. Yes. Um, that's always the way. Yeah. Always the way. Yeah. Um, but you, you just have to... The more you put yourself out doing other things, the more opportunities you create for yourself to meet other people and meet the right people. Mm. So that that is honestly the biggest thing that you can do. And I know sometimes people feel like, here's another thing. If you're going somewhere, don't assume you're being judged. Yeah. Like an example is of the gym. A lot of people are scared to go to the gym because they think people are judging them. Listen, if I'm in the gym and I'm training, I'm looking at nobody else. Yeah. I'm looking, because no, I've got so much, I've got, I'm focusing on me. Yeah. And I've got, no, I'm, you know, if, if there's somebody in the gym who's looking around and judging other people, trust me, those people aren't doing any work themselves. Yeah. And in six months' time, you'll leave them behind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not a worry. Anyone who is doing that is not somebody you should worry about because they're not, one, they're not a decent person to be about around mm-hmm. if they're being like that. And two, like, they're not your they're not your type of people. Yeah. Go with the ones that are focused. Have a chat with them when you're having a shake afterwards or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, I, uh, yeah. I know I know. we kind of shit on pubs and stuff at the start, but I'm now I'm thinking about it. I was like, would you, like it, that's it, definitely a, a valid place where you can, because, like... I'm thinking. I'm thinking now. It's like, okay, what other what other hobbies outside of like fitness would I if if I was in the situation where I wanted to make friends, what would I start looking into? I'd look into team stuff. I really would like joining a club. That would be my main thing. I don't think going and leaning on a bar and hoping to meet people is a good no. Because there's thing. there's there's always that guy as well in bars. Yeah. There is somebody who's just there, literally waiting for someone to, yeah. to come into their vicinity so they can chat your chat. ear off. They're always the one that people talk about as hearing the same stories over and over and over. Yeah, it's yeah. Again, because they're not going and doing anything different. No, they're doing that same. They're they're trapped in a similar loop. Mm-hmm. There's think, just involves more talk. I think my route would be probably like because I'm interested in learning how to ride a motorbike. Mic, so yeah. I'd probably obviously first of all get my CBT. Yeah. I don't know exactly how I'd go go about it from that point, but I'm sure I would end up chatting the, to other people, and it's you, such a well, a friendly kind of community from what I've seen the motorbiking like community. Awesome, dude, it's awesome. But social media, there's your point of contact as yeah. well. Social media is huge. Reach, message people on social media. Mm. If they message you back, hey, well, connection made. And you can do that over anything. Like somebody's just passed CBT, message them going, that's awesome. I'm really looking into doing that. Yeah. How did you go about it? How did you find it? Yeah. Then just start reaching out. And eventually some people will be like, yeah, dude, when you get it done, we'll go for a ride together. Yeah. It is really that easy. The yeah. amount of people who message me going, do you want to go for a ride? And probably never expect to respond. And it's because it's a mutual interest. Yeah. And I have responded like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Of course. If you're yeah. near, come down. Yeah. I had an old friend who I haven't seen for probably 10 years reach out the other week. Was that over YouTube? Over the, the comments? Me saying, yeah, yeah. on YouTube, I saying, saw listen, that. if you haven't spoken to somebody that you haven't spoken to for a while, reach out now and do it. Send that one person that message now. In fact, if you listen to this podcast and there's somebody that you know you haven't spoken to for a while and it's for no good reason other than the fact it's just slipped both your minds, mm-hmm. be the person to reach out and go, hey, just checking in. How you doing? Yeah. We should go for a bit of food sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, because this person who's messaged in, 
I'm going to assume that they had they've you know they they've had more mates in the past. Yeah, because he they... was his personal thing was he's in his thirties now with a family full time job. Yeah, and obviously he's saying a lot of his time is taken up with yeah. that. So then again, it's time management as well. So yeah. have those certain afternoons or whatever in a week where you go and do your thing, which again is where my team thing comes in or going to a club. Yeah, because it's on a set day at a set time doing set things. Yes, um, yeah. so that is important. Yeah, so like he could reach out to his old friends. Like anyone yes. who's contacted, like of college, course, yeah. uni mates, drop them a message. How like you, doing? you know, I've I've recently like started messaging a couple of mates from school that I hadn't seen for like, you know, a good eight, nine, ten years, mm. and just over Instagram, just having a little chat, and it's been great. Yeah. And like coincidentally, one of them, he's got like I think his partner has some horses, and they're going to be just up the road, literally just up the road from where I'm buying a house. Yeah. And so like at some point, I'm going to try and grab a beer with him. And like he's about to well, start back the at the BJJ well, place. And if like, you're like this the guy who's mentioned in the thirty with a family full time job, there's more people like you who are in the thirties with a family full time job in the same situation yeah. who probably sit and are looking for outreach of people to go out with as oh, well. Of course, yeah. So there is a community out there for you to tap into. That like you're not alone. Especially it's very common. Especially after the last twelve months that we've just had. Yes, huge. And everyone's going to come out of this lockdown with a real positive attitude. I think a lot of it, of like, so, yeah. of like taking advantage of. Let's go do this. Fuck yeah, because we don't know if we're going to be locked down again. Yeah. So let's get let's get on it and let's get cracking. Also, so, I think it's just given a great appreciation for the little things because it's so easy to have take like our our lives, especially like I can't speak for the rest of the world, but in like Western civilization where we get to fucking do whatever we want effectively like yeah. money is our only limiting factor when we we want to do things but like there's a lot of freedoms that we we're allowed like you know and so much of that's taken for granted yes and when we had to stay in our house and we weren't allowed to go out unless it was essential we weren't allowed to see our family we weren't allowed to see our friends we weren't allowed to go to the cinema we weren't allowed to do it fuck all and we just realized holy shit we've actually got so much yeah. Like that, we just didn't even. It was we just took that totally for granted. And yeah. I'd like to think that people have like a lasting effect of just booking a meal at a restaurant and it's somewhere new that they've never been, and they're like, "This is a new experience." I'm so lucky that I get a new experience. I, you know, that's I, like I, my pulling up at the reservoir and being yeah. able to look over it because we hadn't been able to ride for so long. I think that's why it hit me so hard. Yeah, because I was suddenly looking over this entire valley, this where I could see where we'd ridden from mm-hmm. and how far we'd come to get to this hilltop, and it was just like. Wow, mm. look at what's just at our doorstep. Like, wow. Yeah, it is crazy, isn't it? What we take yeah. for granted. It, it is. really is. That it's um, it, it, it's hopefully that I think that that will be most people's biggest takeaway from the last twelve months. Like that. That's just be just appreciative. appreciative. What's yeah? You don't have to go millions of miles away to find some amazing things to do and no. and places to be. No, and like um, I think a lot of people have also found how great it is being out in nature because that's all that's really the oh, only retreat 100%. that we've had. Yeah. And 100%. that's something that really does connect with people. Like I know don't I, get stuck back going to the fucking bars and sitting in fucking shops and all this crap. Like go and have your fun you know on certain afternoons but then time in keep that those those nature walks and that in your schedule that yeah. you started during lockdown keep them in there. Yeah, we meant especially now it's starting to get nicer weather and stuff yeah. like that. It, oh don't God. get me wrong it can be a bit grim sometimes in the winter but there is definitely something that connects with humans when you're out in nature. I 100%. I've never met anyone who's like I don't like going outside. They might think they don't like exercise. But just going out and seeing, you know, a nice, nice, some nice fields or some woods or whatever. Like, I've never met anyone who's just like, this sucks. Yeah, this sucks. Yeah. I hate nature. (laughs) It's uh, one of those things where when you realize how much we are not connected anymore with, with going outside and with the earth, that. And this starts. This is where you start sounding like people go, "Oh, fucking hippie things." No, the only reason like that the hippie thing was seen as too like extreme is because they were that far end of the spectrum, mm-hmm. like literally living without means, effectively. You know, going back to we we get what we can get for living free. In all, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But there is a, a, I mean, proven fact that you know we now we put rubber soles on our feet. Um, we live in in concrete based houses. We're no longer connected to the earth and it's really important to think to ground yourself at least 30 to 45 minutes a day like bare feet to the ground like because we, they've measured when you're you're in your our normal shoes our trainers the rubber soles yeah. they, they measure the um, electrical impulse going around your body like a, it's, i can't remember what you call it i'm going to get this wrong but basically they um put a uh a electrical probe on you and mm-hmm. they measure what they probe your bum yeah they probe up the bum so they shiver man there <laughs> they uh, yeah they, they, they whatever electrical impulses going around the body they measure you know that whatever the fuck it is going around the body I should have researched this before I talk about it but it's just popped into my head um, 
um, and they measure it. Then they measure it when you're barefoot on the earth and our actual uh, amount of electrical impulse running around the body decreases when we're, which makes sense because we're now grounded. Yeah, we're grounded. So imagine if we have a higher electrical energies flying around our bodies when we're in a rubber soles, trying to escape, it's trying to, trying to get grounded that can't get grounded. That yeah. starts messing with our physiology. It starts messing with the way that we function. Yeah. So being just connected to the earth for a short period of day lets your, almost lets your... Um, Electrical cycles reset yeah. and get fresh, a fresh charge as it was. It almost recharge, you know what yeah. I mean? And we're supposed, we are part of the fucking earth. We're part of this planet. We live here and we are supposed to be connected to it. And we disconnect to every given fucking opportunity. Yeah. So that is why when you go out and you breathe the fresh air and you, you sit in nature and you sit on the ground, the reason you feel better is because you're literally connecting yourself to the fucking earth. Yeah, I and think you, that, that visual stimulation as well, like actually seeing it, yeah. makes you realize how much, how much like you're part of just a, you're a tiny little piece of a massive kind of world yeah and it kind of uh puts puts life in perspective for and, you sometimes and you can poo poo it as much as you want and shit on it and go out and walk every day for 15 to 20 minutes and then come back a week later and tell me you don't feel better for it yeah and you yeah, don't need to 100%. explain it you don't need to know why just go and do it go and sit by a tree for a little bit lean up against it take 10 15 minutes a day i yeah. promise you you'll feel fucking more elevated i need to get out and start walking a lot more because realistically i'm i'm probably walking the least i've walked in like well over the last 10 years like we yeah. we lost our dog just before christmas and I, because when we had him walked him every day for an hour every day for like 10 yeah, years yeah you were saying this and then know. like going from and you you know not having a dog and not having an, a reason to get out and walk you know, we still tried to, and we borrowed my, you know, my partner's mom's dog to go and walk <laughs> walk Bertie. Every, you know, on on the weekends we do that, but it, you know, then it went from you know seven days a week to one day a week, and it was and like I'm not going to go into it too much because I'll probably get upset, but like yeah. we, it was hard to go for walks because I was so used to it with Lanza. Ah, uh, so it made you miss him. Yeah, yeah. So like I almost stopped wanting to go for a while. Yeah, it makes sense. But like trying to trying to get back into it and like build some new positive associations with like going yeah we just go out and do the same walks without him and feel him there I guess yeah. is the thing isn't it like that happy memory he's left you with this is what I always try and do is you know the things that could upset you are actually a great thing because when you're there it's the fact that they left you with such a happy memory of doing it mm. that it's enough to make you upset, upset that they're not there with you anymore doing it yeah. and that's a really that's a privilege mm. that somebody left you with such a great memory yeah. That isn't it? When yeah, you oh, yeah that it's way, it's huge. It's a huge positive thing. The, yeah, it is. It's, it's like really the same great. thing. Like, a, and it's, I did it with my granddad. It was the same thing. It's like you missed that person so much because they were so good. Mm. They were so great. They were so great to have in your life. And it's appreciating that fact that, that I'm so happy that I feel so sad that, that I don't get this with them anymore. Because imagine not having that memory yeah. to feel sad about. It's, it's, it's a very so that, good, good way turn, of looking at it. Yeah. It is. And it in turn makes that sadness a happiness. Yeah. So now every time everything that would make me sad about my granddad not being here makes me smile. Yeah, and it's a good. You just have to flip that mechanism. Yeah, and that's no, it's it a, it, that's the perfect way of looking at it because it's so yeah. true, isn't it? It is literally like a perfect way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm going to try to start getting out more because, like I said, I've been doing maybe one a week on the weekend. You know what we should do? We should do a hike once a month. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. And that's what I mean. Putting these things in your timetable. Yeah, we should fucking do that. We should do a hike once a month because yeah. it's literally Wales is there. Yeah, like, round the freaking just corner, around the corner with amazing amazing scenery mm -hmm. and it's uh so let's well let's go a bit deeper let's say okay so we've covered a little bit of the mentality of meeting people and getting out and the fact you're going to have to put yourself out there that is number one you're going to have to no one's going to drop on your doorstep unless no. you get really friendly with your post no <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> works another opportunity i'm friendly with all of my delivery people yeah you know uh, my, I, there's a guy who comes here's how i make friends real easy right so um where i there's a guy who's coming um fix my I had a burst pipe yes now the guy who comes and fixes all the stuff in the house is the same guy because he's part of um where i live there is a management center that deals with all the houses because they're all interconnected so if there's anything broken in one house there's this one team that deals with it because mm -hmm. they basically built the places yeah so they have the team that fixes so the maintenance team yeah. so yeah the, the guy who comes around who's come around who originally came around and started fixing things was just amiable you know like hey do you want a cup of tea whatever it's like that cool thanks for that now I know that he rides an electric crosser bike yeah. in the hills because he just bought it for himself over lockdown to be able to stop himself going mental. Yeah. Um, I know that he used to be a great motorbike rider. I know that he's... Uh, and I got to know the guy. And yeah. now he invited me out to go and ride his electric motorbike with him. That's just it. over a couple of times. Because when he came, because I said... Um, we got talking a little bit about whiskey and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, oh, and I showed him the whiskeys that we got from the podcast. And I was like, they're cool, yeah. aren't they? And then um, and I was like, 
mate, whenever, if you're like fed up or whatever, just uh, take my number and give me a buzz. We'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a whiskey and that. And he said, yeah, man, whatever. Well, I'll take that, you know, when I'm going back out in the forest and you can come and have a go on the bike. Yeah. And that was a simple connection I could have not made and yeah. not done. But I made the effort to reach out. Worst case, he doesn't want to. Yeah, and, he and just, it's fine. He, he can just be polite and just not message yeah, and not you. And that's fine. And I think a lot of people are worried about that. Like, yeah. you reach out. Put yourself out there. Just don't get crushed every time something turns you down. Yeah. But uh, in terms of being too busy for it, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Sit down and look about what you... Where do you really put your fucking time? Like, how much time do you spend watching series on Netflix that mm-hmm. you could be doing something else? I know 100% in some weeks I could legitimately you utilize another 10 hours of that week yeah. in a different way yeah definitely and that's a lot of time uh and let's also put it this way when you spend time doing something that's busy work mm. that makes you feel tired by the end of it yeah if you fit in going and seeing something or doing something for two hours and you think oh that's gonna fucking end late you will feel brilliant after doing that two hours of getting out and doing it yeah. it's a different um outcome to that block of time spent yeah people see things as like an energy drain or an energy save Not, the, yeah. they're like so and and that's it it's like saving energy by doing nothing doing nothing doesn't save you energy it, it well it does in theory yeah but there's also things that recharge you social interactions can tire you out but also if you're in need of them they can recharge you Training in the gym can tire you out, but if your body's in need of it, it can recharge you. Yeah. Like you will you will gain you'll it helps have a net you. gain in energy. It helps recenter you. Yeah. Is what it does. It helps bring bring your focus back online. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like you've got to have a balance as like and everyone's balance is gonna be different yeah. and this is gonna be in all different factors of their life in terms of the amount of sleep that they need, the amount of social interaction they need, the amount of, you know, um gratification from working hard they need, the amount of physical exercise they need. And you wanna try and get those all dialed into your specific kind of areas of what, what you need because yeah. if you're off, if you're too far over or too far under, you're gonna feel worse for it. So doing less will not always make you feel more energetic. Quite makes often, me feel it makes it feel worse. I feel yeah. worse. So, like, fucking interact with more people. If if that's something that you feel you need, but you're like, oh, I'm too tired to do it, shut the you, fuck you're up. You're only too tired to do it because you're sat on the sofa yeah, thinking just, about it. Just fucking go and do it, and then tell me that you feel too tired. Yes. Like, if try if, it, and then yeah. if you feel too tired, then yeah, then yeah, you know. yeah use a process very of elimination. True. Yeah, very, very true, man. Very, oh. very good point. Yeah. Your brain's a good brain. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is on super the, true. Occasion. The amount of times, think about the amount of times that you didn't want to train and went and did it and felt fucking amazing afterwards. Mm-hmm. Almost all the time. How yeah. many sessions yeah. do you have where you're like, man, I wish I never turned, turned up to the gym? <laughs> yeah. Unless you hurt yourself, yes. then maybe. Yeah. But almost every time, even if it was a shit session, you're like, thank fuck I've knocked that one out. Yeah. I won't feel like a twat for the rest <laughs> yeah. of the day because yeah. I was lazy. Yeah. Like, and if you are genuinely bollocks after that, you yeah. take the next day off, but yeah. you take it with purpose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can completely then logically justify it. Yes. Because you know when you're lying to yourself. You know when you're telling yourself, yeah. I, I'm, I'm too tired to do this, when really you probably could have done it, but you're yeah. just thinking you're saving energy. Yeah. Like, be efficient with your energy, yeah. and it's not fucking... Doing nothing doesn't... Almost always doesn't actually make you feel better. No, yeah, it does make you feel worse, makes you feel yeah. even more lethargic and awful. For whatever reason, like we are meant to be active, like pretty constantly, like we that's how we're we're designed. But yeah. because we are stuck in a, an office, you know, all day, and then we feel tired at the end of it, even though we barely moved. Uh, we're tired because we've barely moved. It's a mental But dream. we think, oh, physical. I'm so tired because I've been yeah. working hard all day. You're tired because you've not done enough. It's, yes. It is. It's getting that sweet spot and, and it's going to vary from person to person. Which just gets back up to getting in a routine of getting to bed at a decent hour and getting up at a decent hour, you yeah. know, and really making the most of the days. Like, I know every time I wake up past after nine o'clock, my day just fucking disappears. Mm. Whereas if I'm up at like half seven, I'm way more efficient yeah. and I'm way better. And then I'm starting to feel tired at normal times. Yeah. Whereas if I get up later, I'm like, I can go till four in the morning. It's retarded. Yeah. I have that fucking night owl gene. Yeah. I yeah, 100% that, have it. I, that, my circadian rhythm is off. Yeah. That's it why has I'm been like, since I, a kid. Yeah. If I, if I don't have to get up and like when, when I kind of allow freedom, I do just stay up later and later and later and yeah. get up later and later. Yeah. Um, even though I find that not very great for being productive. So I kind of go against the grain for what works for me. Mm. Um, but my phone is absolutely going mental at the moment. I'm having so many messages. It? I'm getting called again. I'm, God. <laughs> it's your voice. Um, what day is it? No, it is a Saturday. Yeah. It's not a Sunday. No, whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Shall we get on to some of the questions? Do you think we covered that enough? I'm trying to think what other elements... Hey, here's the thing. Listen, if you've got any more questions regarding that or anything that we've said to do with the friend-making thing, uh, hit us up in the comments. Yeah. Also, let's fuck the algorithm up again. Oh, yeah. So hit us up in the comments. This week, what should we have this week for our random... Um, uh, so let's comments. get down to business. <laughs> Let's get down, let's get down. What's that freaking song you've been singing okay, all so week? So, if anyone's seen... So, this is the cartoon version of Mulan, not the, the live-action version where there's yeah. the singing. Because the guy in it, I can't remember his name, is it's like... Um, so, so, Basically, it's all come about Lu- because you now are a man bun. Yeah, because I've got the man bun. I've got his hairstyle, and he's like, you let's do actually get have down to business, yeah. to defeat... The Huns. the Huns. I've not even seen the movie and I now know the song. Have they sent us daughters, daughters when I asked, asked for, sons. for sons? Never seen the movie, guys. Yeah. You sung it that much. Yeah. I know the freaking it's lyrics. It's fucking stuck in I might head. watch it tomorrow. It is really good. I love Mulan. I tried watching the live action one. Turned off at 20 no, minutes. The, the Disney was, Mulan is, is great, man. I really, really It does look it. better, the actual uh, cartoon one. Yeah, man. You know, it is, it's, it's a I'm very a big good fan one. of the live action stuff. Yeah. Like, I genuinely loved the Christopher Robin, the Winnie the Pooh movie, is amazing if you appreciate grading cinematography and the way that they capture and shoot the angles and shots it's so uh respectful almost of the way the books are drawn yeah it is just i love every single part of it like it's got ewan mcgregor in it for starters who's just you awesome. lovely to watch yeah. um the characters winnie tigger they're nailed even though they're brought to life mm-hmm. they're brought to life in a way where you're like yeah that is what they would be like yeah. you know and it's just so good the the, the movie's good the storyline's good it's not too childish it brought me to tears at yeah. the very end because it's such a heartwarming tale and it just breaks you makes you feel like a child again immediately yeah. because i grew up with winnie the pooh mm-hmm. you know what i mean so Ah, oh, loved it. And so it was the same thing with like Beauty and the Beast, uh, Jungle Book. I just thought they were done really, really well. Yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was disappointed, you know, they did Pinocchio. Do you know they've done Pinocchio? No. In Spanish. Really? What was That's the odd. point? That's very odd. Rizal, well, they're redoing it now oh, right, for an okay. uh, English speaking audience. But oh, how bizarre. Yeah. yeah, so there is actually a Pinocchio done, but it's in, in Spanish, live action, already oh. done. No, yeah. uh, Beauty really and odd. the Beast was a very good one. Yeah, I loved very that. Good. Very well done. M. Watson did a great job. Luke, well. uh, Luke Evans. Was I'm a big fan, big fan of all of those remake, yeah. the remakes of them. There's two for Jungle Book, isn't there? There's Jungle Book and then Mowgli. Yes. I'm trying I to think which one I don't, liked. I didn't like I... the Mo- I think Jungle Book was good other than the snake. They ruined the snake. Mm. They made it a cross between a cobra and a tree boa and it was just weird. Mm, yeah. Which yeah. is odd. And it, actually, and you're in the original. Mm. Snake. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh. What do you mean? Same voice. Same voice. Go watch Jungle Book now yeah. and try not to hear Winnie the Pooh when the snake talks. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Trust in me. Yeah, it's Winnie the Pooh. Oh. <laughs> How strange. Evil Winnie the Pooh. Evil Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, come on then, let's, let's head on. Yeah, if you've got any questions, so in the comments, yeah, mess the algorithm up, leave a comment today for us. Saying let's, let's get, get down, down to business. Let's get down to business. <laughs> Or just any Mulan quote. Or, or if you're Mulan, a Mulan quotes, fan. if you're a Mulan fan, yeah. There we go. Let's make the comment section an amusing place as always. Oh, yeah. Well, no, uh, right, I'm going to pull up your uh, the questions. That you questions you guys put in. So I put up uh, this morning just a quick question one. So Because we knew we were going to do a big topic on the friend thing. So we're going to quick fire these ones. So uh, this one, it's very appropriate for us. How long have we been going? Yeah, hour 13. So yeah. Yeah, so we're we good. Quick fire. Uh, right, so no okay. Mr. Sod it, Mr. Lewis. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, um, so, how can I keep my concentration? I have trouble learning, for example. So, uh, okay. Yeah, next. Actually, that's, a, that's the best one. So, we, <laughs> that's something that we have. So, like for me, remove distraction. So, if you find something distracting, so I can't have background music, I yeah. can't have access to TV. You can't have background music? Nope. I, like, huh. I, I, have, if, what have you tried, though? Have you tried, like, I acoust not classical lyrical music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I sometimes will, I do have like a classical playlist that I can put on quietly. But even that sometimes I'm going to give you one to try. Go on, go on um, Spotify and type in DMT. Yes, no, you you mentioned and it before. And then use there's a playlist pops up. It's like a, a an alien looking head. It's the number one thing in there. It's got over ten hours or maybe more of music mm-hmm. on it. Put that on because it includes m- binaural beats. I have had it on in the background, and I thought it'd be weird. You don't even hear it. You don't notice it. Yeah. But it's on, and it stops that silence. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't mind uh, time. So try yeah. it. I don't mind time. Yeah, but, I, I don't, but so, sometimes. Yeah, so like... The binaural beats in it 100% yeah. help. So 100, 100% for this person, I would say, like, if you have certain distractions, whether they be visual distractions, yeah. so clutter, remove the clutter. Huge factor clutter, um, yeah, Or massive. audio clutter. 
remove that factor. Don't watch the TV, watch Shandy work. We yeah. all think we can. Yeah. We can't. No, yeah, you, Everything you can't, takes you can't, me f- literally four times longer. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, and make sure that you're in a good state to, to do it. So that is going to be in terms of your levels of arousal. And by arousal, I mean like in terms of like stimulation. So yeah. if you've just woken up and you need to do a load of stuff, probably not best. Well, let's... Um, we did a real quick one we said before. Do the task that you want to do the most first. Yeah. And that will leave you in a positive mindset to do the rest of the stuff that you don't yeah. want to do afterwards. That's yeah, That's exactly. a real big one that we mentioned before. Yeah, yeah. Ta- tackle that because, again, you build momentum from task to task. Snowballing. Yeah, snowball yeah. effect. So if you get something done that you know you want to do and it's a it's a, a good win, just tick off that, then on to the next one. And your kind of that momentum will build throughout the day and you'll be more productive. But also just make sure you are in that right headspace. So if you... You know, you've got a shitload of work to do, but you're not a morning person. Get up, allow yourself half an hour, an hour to kind of get in the right state. Yeah. Have a have a fucking hot shower, have a coffee, Try have whatever you need to do to get meditation yeah. in that morning wake yeah. up. There's a on my the I discussed before on the wake up playlist that I have on Spotify. So type up wake uh, wake yourself up, Lex Griffin. The fourth song in is an Alan Watts meditation for 15 minutes. So the four songs before are the time that you have wake up, feel happy, make your coffee. There's enough time to do that. By the time you sit down, that Alan Watts song hits. You sit and do it 15 minutes later. I tell you now when you open your eyes, the world will seem brighter. Mm-hmm. And it massively helps focus you in and yeah. get you set for the day. Yeah. Or morning movements. Get up, do some ab work, yeah. some press-ups, anything that kind of gets your body up and moving. Mm-hmm. Don't put a dressing gown on, slump downstairs and go and sit down with yeah. the coffee or whatever yeah because i'm training early in the morning and i'm about to go back to training even earlier so i'll be training like 6 30 in the morning probably yeah, sometimes to be able to do that it's fucking it sucks but when you get into the routine of it it's very good and my yeah. days are so much more productive 100%. but it's really really well for me it's really hard to start forming i think that i might habit. have you message me when you're waking up to go and train to see if i can be able to do my morning movements at that yeah. time yeah i'll just call you back like, yeah Lex, maybe do get out of bed so there's another thing yeah get some people on your on your case and yeah. that stuff yeah yeah. And Let, not allow yourself to get mad about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So I think that's fairly... We nailed that in a non-quick fire fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so what is the best way to cut body fat without ma- um, while maintaining as much muscle mass as possible? Macro ratio, question mark. Fuck, that's a huge question. Yeah. That I... is a, a limitless answer, to qu- answer question. Yeah. We cannot answer it. Here's the two macro ratios that you should use, in my opinion. You've got the 40-40-20, so you've got 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fats. But I would honestly say it's way better to do 40 protein, 30 carbs, 30 fats. You're going to stay way more sane. Your brain's not going to get fluffy, and you need to be in a minus 500 calorie deficit from your maintenance level, which you need to work out, which includes your activity levels. I would probably say even less. I'd say a little less than that in terms of to maintain as much muscle as possible. 500 calories? Yeah, I would go less. I would, so, Start at 250 then yeah, and go I, from there. I would always say, like, you want to get away with the minimum you can, the minimum to still make you progress. You want to eat as much as possible while still losing weight. Yeah, exactly. And when, and once you've plateaued for at least a week, like maybe even longer, I would, then you make an the adjustment. point. If you plateau for two weeks straight, yeah. then adjust. Yeah. But yeah. don't adjust week to week. Yeah, like cool. allow, yeah, allow a bit. Um, so what are your, you. what's that? Sorry. I'm going to get ruthless with you. Oh yeah. That, that's cool. Off. Um, what are your go-to shoulder exercises, especially after your injury legs? Arnold press. Brilliant. Amazing yeah. one for that. Avoid laterals. If you've got that kind of pain on laterals, you do not need them. Yeah. Arnold press with that rotation, but only rotate as much as you need. So only start with a hammer and rotate out and then work yourself into a full twist. And for not shoulders, but great for shoulder health is incline bench, uh, curls. Yes, bicep curls because yeah, yeah. they open up your entire shoulder and it's mm-hmm. re- they're really great for helping yeah. and also when you're doing bench press do poliquin press which is the twisty uh, dumbbell press just yes. research poliquin press is great yeah, yeah I know exactly yeah. what you mean oh okay. and uh, kettlebells turned upside down bottom up pressing straight up yeah bottom up kettlebell press keeping presses. your elbows tight to the body yeah, yeah that's a real great bottom up kettlebell press there you press. go so search bottom up kettlebell yeah press. that's really okay. just good for stability in general I'll leave that one you've pretty much covered a, real, yeah, a good range the there um, so, stay away from stuff that hurts basically yeah yeah, yeah I think that's a golden rule if yeah, something don't hurts push through the other day I started doing some mace swings for the first time and I was trying to do them in rounds and I started to get my elbow tendon on started to flare up and I was meant to do Back another round off. so I just stopped and yeah. then and the other person was just like oh what up what was up and I was just like it it was hurting my elbow I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna if just you keep inflaming the same fucking spot it yeah. will that injury will stay you yeah. have to let that inflammation subside yeah I'm not gonna feel like a fucking bitch because not doing thing, something that hurts another thing I learned the other day from the doctor you have to take ibuprofen for up to 10 days before you actually see the benefits of anti-inflammatory effect really yeah 10 days straight you gotta keep it up 
Oh. So there you go. Because I, I got to, I told the doctor when I went, oh, so I've had my thumb injected again with the steroids. Mm. So I've now got a super oh, giri right yeah, thumb. Yeah. Isn't it? So he's, he's on that second just, side. He's, he's on the second cycle. Like, Come on, digits. Yeah. Um, so, uh, th- yeah, with that, um, the, I remember saying, the doc said, have you been taking, I said, I stopped after three days because yeah. I thought it was too much. He's yeah. like, oh, no, you've got to take it for at least 10 days to see the actual anti-inflammatory benefit. Yeah. So there you go. Did he up his cycle after the, uh, yeah, after the first cycle? He went, I went into the doctor and he was like, damn, your thumb's looking jacked. Yeah. Let me just boost, let me just boost your thumb ratios. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he put the needle into the fucking hilt Ooh. in that one. It went right Ooh. in. Oops. Okay. If you could remove one health word from from the vocabulary what would it be drying out yeah i fucking hate the stupidest thing ever because it makes people dehydrate yeah get look dry is yeah. a stupid terminology it is not it's okay. tight is a better word yeah yeah tight's better if anything when you look tight you are super hydrated mm. like yeah. so it's re- it, drying is just such a stupid thing to say i'd have to say toning I don't like the word toning. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I think toning had like such a... It stops women thinking that it's building muscle. Yeah, because it's true. like all you're doing, you're losing fat and you're able to see more of the definition. You're not actually... There's no toning happening. It's like the, there's two things. You're either yeah. building muscle hey, or you're losing fat. Hey, ladies, listen up. You can lift heavy ass weights and all it's going to do is make you toned. Yeah. So there you go. Crack on with the weights. Toning. Will not make you big. You can't get big because you don't have the tes- testosterone to back up getting big. Yeah. It's just not in your... We've got a testosterone. It's we're not struggling in your to get big as well. Yeah, we're struggling with our testosterone. So you don't, don't worry. Yeah. Smash those weights. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, best advice for somebody in their early 20s. Early 20s? Yeah. Oh, enjoy life. Don't get tied down in a relationship. Mm. Biggest I, one. I would say... Work. Travel. As much as possible. So yours are going to be so different. Yours are so different from mine. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, we were talking about it earlier, work hard and work smart. So many people are fucking tied up with work smart now that they're missing out the work hard element. Work hard when you're in your early 20s because it's fucking easy to recover from burying yourself in work. Yeah. So if you want to get yourself set up for life, push hard and also push smart. But I think travel and being worldly wise is good to find out what you really want to do in the yeah, world that alongside element. that. So one, if you once you figure out what you want to do if you're twenties, then yes, your advice. Yeah. If you don't know what to do, my advice. Yeah, yeah. Go. Good point. Um, your one go to gym track. Mine is uh, Queens oh. of the Stone Age Millionaire. Oh, one go to one. This instantly, is Brett. Instantly one that fires me up. Disturbed. Down with the sickness. Down with the sickness. Oh, that's mine as well. Oh. Fuck goosebumps every time. Yeah. It makes me just want to smash the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if we've got the same yeah. one, is that yours as well? Yeah, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, there we go. Bestie, nice. There we go. All right, uh, that was an easy one. Um, what game were or are you addicted to? Red Dead Redemption Two. Mm. Yeah, Red Dead's fucking amazing. Yeah. I'd say probably the only game that I've been properly like addicted to would have been um, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Dude, I tried playing that again recently. It's not. It's too oh. magical for me. I oh, fucking love it. I do. I love Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, so I feel like I'm... I'm is really Skyrim... In... Hang on. Is Skyrim the one with dragons? Yeah. Where they randomly attack you? Yes. Okay, so it's not the one I was playing. Were you playing... What's the other one? Elder Scrolls. What's that? So there's uh, there's a Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which was on Xbox 360, and then there's Elder Scrolls Online, which I didn't like, but apparently What's now it's What's the other better. one that's like Skyrim, but it's not Skyrim? And it still has, like, beasties in it. Um, the Witcher? No. The Witcher one? No, it's think. another one, because I thought I was going to play Skyrim, and then I loaded the game up, and I was like, oh, it's not Skyrim, it's something else. Very similar, but not as good. So I'll take it, yeah, Skyrim's wicked. I wish I could play it on the mm. Xbox, but I can't. Yeah. No, Sky- Skyrim is on Xbox. Is it, uh, is it really old or something? So Skyrim came out on Xbox 360, and then they re-released it, I'm pretty sure, on Xbox One. Um, so I have an Xbox One, so I can play Skyrim. Yeah. Right, I'll look it up. Go, yeah, next. Yeah. Oh, it, my phone's locked. Um, okay. Uh, plans, goals for the rest of the year? Skydive, ride motorbikes into Europe, um, get jacked. And um, more tattoos. Yeah, yeah. Me and you Ooh. are going to go and get tattoos together. Yeah, we're going to. So we at some point we said we're going to start having some guests on the podcast. And when you said we we're going to get a tattoo, it's I've got a friend who owns a tattoo shop. So we're going to try and get a tattoo while we're doing a podcast. Yeah. If you would like to see a tattoo whilst doing the podcast, let us know in the comments. Yeah. So I said one of my goals is I really want this crew cast to take off over this year. I, oh, I yeah. think that like oh, yeah. I really, I really want to like I put that in there too. Yeah, I like having. Yeah, just getting some more growth, getting some more progress with the, the crew cast. I also get my business back on track after a year of being in lockdown, as well as maintaining all these great habits that are formed during lockdown. I want to keep that going while my schedule ramps up and gets busier, yeah. like still allow time for myself. So yeah, cool. th- those are mine. Um, right. 
Now that your beard is long God and is. sticks out from under your helmet, how will you deal with the bugs flying in it? <laughs> do you know what? I've never had a problem with it. Yeah. Never had a problem. They do not, because they don't splat when they hit a beard. They only splat when they hit the helmet. And my beard, because I ride the way so I it's ride. it's like a crash mat for It doesn't appear to be the point where they land. Yeah. And often as well, I will have my uh, chin guard in, which yeah. obviously tucks the beard up entirely to the helmet. So it's all good. Okay, don't worry about the beard, people. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So, tips to deal with life, struggles, stress, and hard times. This is so general, but... Yeah, we've been we've been through a lot of these. Listen to the other podcasts. We talk through about the snowball effect of setting yourself little goals every day that you can complete easily, as simple as making your bed, getting showered, getting dressed, and creating the focus on the positives in your life and literally not focusing on any of the negatives. Mm-hmm. Because if you focus on a negative, you're going to literally start with, oh, I've got no food and I feel hungry, to 20 minutes later, seeing how dreadful your life is. Yeah. Because here's the thing, negative... Negative thoughts want to grow and manifest. They're a little entity that wants to get bigger. So shut them off quick and go and focus on something positive that day. Yeah. So we've got this other one here. Uh, when are you painting your nails? I'm going to assume that they're talking to you. I have Max. already invested in more nail polish that arrived today from Amazon. So are you doing your fingernails? I'm going to start, start my fingers. Toes? I think it caused so much just uh, just painting my toes. Yeah. I'm going to start painting my fingernails. Just do it for the, do it for the, do do it for the clicks. Do it for the clicks. Yeah. But the, like, I, I guess a lot of people don't even know that that used to be like a, a thing that let guys did all the time. Let me know if you've painted your nails. If you're a bloke painting your nails, um, let me know in the comments. And if you're a bloke that doesn't think it's okay to paint your nails, let me just say two words. Chuck... Liddell. Yeah, exactly. The most manly man ever. And yeah. he used to paint his nails. Chuck Liddell. Yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure Emma's painted my nails at some point. I still give a shit. Yeah. How oh, could Like, you're talking to a dude that has a giant blonde mullet. <laughs> I've got flowers tattooed all the way down my arm. Um, I've got my granddad's ashes in my ink in my other side. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I do not give a fuck. Yeah. Like, at all. Uh, if it's fun and it's a giggle, I'm up for it. Yeah. We've, we've got we through. nailed it we are killing the game wonderful right well guys there you go episode 13 over the hump yeah even the one that tried to screw us yeah we fixed it we said we're going to get an actual gremlin we were looking at gremlin gonna, statues we may as well we have had that many we may as yeah. well just to show yeah are we going to get the flat i want to get the flashing gremlin yeah because yeah. he's the coolest yeah we, we were looking on amazon for for, yeah. for gremlins and yeah, if anybody knows where in to, like a trench coat in the trench coat gremlin if yeah. you know where to get one of these that's not 15 centimeters tall because that's just too small yeah they're only only we like want half a big a we want a big one yeah like at least what a foot and a half yeah you got 24 inches at least don't yeah. you yeah is that that's two foot no that's too big yeah maybe I, 12 I, inches a bit over 12 inches 12 to 16 inches yeah yeah 18 inches would be a foot and a half. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, whatever. Do you know what that reminds me of? The time I bought... The life-size gremlin. You know when you had action, uh, the, the G.I. Joe Action Man? Yeah. You know the Action Man? He was like 12 inches, wasn't he? I don't know. And I remember I bought Robocop. Mm-hmm. And Robocop was only 10. Yeah. But I thought it'd be all right. Yeah. And it wasn't. When no. you played with him, he was shorter. Yeah. It ruined it. But he was a really cool Robocop toy. Yeah. He was like proper full malleable Robocop yeah. with the helmet that came off. I think I had that it as still, well. still scars me to this day that I didn't buy the bigger Robocop. Damn. So yeah. buy your kids the bigger toy piece. Because I think like Gremlin, like in the film, they're probably meant to be about two probably foot best, tall. Yeah. So you can probably almost get like a life size one. Yeah, if you can find if people know where to get a twelve inch or more, then we're happy and um, that's that what will she make said. our weekend. That's what she <laughs> and we'll end on that one. Gremlins and everything. Hope you're all having a lovely week ahead of you. Make sure it's a positive one. Make your own goddamn yeah. energy, people. Enjoy get this out there. new freedom. We are free. Go and enjoy it. That's from me and Mr. Lewis. Toodle pip. Toodle pip. <laughs>